We gather in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Have mercy on us, O Lord. For we have sinned against you. Show us, O Lord, your mercy. And grant us your salvation. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, increase our faith, hope, and charity, and make us love what you command so that we may merit what you promise. To our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, be subordinate to one another out of reverence for Christ. Wives should be subordinate to their husbands as to the Lord. For the husband is the head of his wife, just as Christ is head of the church. He himself, the Savior of the body. As the church is subordinate to Christ, so wives should be subordinate to their husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ loved the church and handed himself over for her to sanctify her, cleansing her by the bath of water with a word that he might present to himself the church in splendor, without spot or wrinkle or any such thing, that she might be holy and without blemish. So also husbands should love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself, for no one hates his own flesh, but rather nourishes and cherishes it, even as Christ does the church because we are members of his body. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and his mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak in reference to Christ and the church. In any case, each one of you should love his wife as himself, and the wife should respect her husband. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Blessed are those who fear the Lord. Blessed are those who fear the Lord. Blessed are you who fear the Lord, who walk in his ways. For you shall eat the fruit of your handiwork. 
Blessed shall you be and favored. Blessed are those who fear the Lord. Your wife shall be like a fruitful vine in the recesses of your home. Your children like olive plants around your table. Blessed are those who fear the Lord. Behold, thus is the man blessed who fears the Lord. The Lord bless you from Zion. May you see the prosperity of Jerusalem all the days of your life. Blessed are those who fear the Lord. Please stand. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, What is the kingdom of God like? To what can I compare it? It is like a mustard seed that a man took and planted in the garden. When it was fully grown, it became a large bush, and the birds of the sky dwell in its branches. Again he said, To what shall I compare the kingdom of God? It is like a yeast that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of wheat flour until the whole batch of dough was leavened. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. My dear brothers and sisters, our gospel this afternoon has two parables. And let me reflect beginning with the last one, with the second one. The Lord said that the kingdom of God is like a yeast, a yeast which a woman took and mixed it with three measures of wheat flour and until the whole batch of dough was leavened. Now, the yeast can be a symbol of change. Yung paggumagawa ng tinapay, inihahalo ang yeast, umaalsa ang arena. So, the Lord is telling us, as disciples, as my disciples, you should be like the yeast, agents of change, instruments of change for the better. Kasi maaari ka maging instrumento ng kasamaan. Tayo ay inaanyayahan ng Panginoon na maging instrumento ng pagbabago. And so, for example, in your office, there is not much care about others. Kanya-kanya. Kanya-kanyang diskarte, walang pakialaman. Maybe you can begin with yourself by becoming more outgoing, taking care. Oh, ako na ang bahala doon gumawa do sa hindi mo matatapos. Something like that. Pag hindi nakapasok, don't worry, I'll take care. In other words, by your attitude, you are beginning to change the environment. Or at home, sa pamilya, no? parang kahit magkakapatid, nagsisiraan, maybe you can be the source of uh, agent of change. You can be the instrument of change. Wag mo silang gayahin, kundi matuto kang to reach out, to go, out of your way to be more kind 
to be more forgiving. And therefore, the ad, ad, uh, environment that is mostly negative because of you is changed into something worthwhile and positive. Ayan ang gusto ng Panginoon sa atin. Kasi kumisan nagre-reklamo tayo, bakit ganito sa lipunan? Bakit ganito sa bayan? Bakit ganito tayo? Well, siguro sinasabi ng Panginoon, you begin with yourself. Ikaw ang mauna, ikaw ang maging instrumento ng pagbabago. Kung madilim, ikaw ang magdala ng liwanag. Kung madilim, ikaw ang magdala ng liwanag. And that brings me to the second, to, to the first parable. The first parable speaks about smallness. He says, it's like a mustard seed, the smallest of all seed. But when it is grown, it becomes so large that birds can dwell in the, its branches. You see, small is beautiful, and sometimes small is more powerful. So, simulan mo yung pagbabago sa pamamagitan ng maliliit, maliliit na mga gawang mabuti, little acts of kindness. Nakita natin yan sa a recent re relief operations ng angat buhay. Marami naman doon, hindi nagbigay ng mga truck-truck na mga bigas, truck-truck na mga dilata, hindi. Kundi mga maliliit na mga kontribusyon na kapag pinagsama-sama ay nakapagbibigay tulong sa marami. We begin with small things. Sapagkat kahit maliit, kapag pinagsama-sama, malaking pagbabago ang idudulot. Be agents of change and do it even in your own small way. Amen. Please stand. Like a great tree with flourishing branches, or like a seed quietly growing, so the kingdom of God spreads. We make our prayers together as our share in that loving plan of divine providence. To every petition, our response would be, God of life, make our lives life-giving. God of life, makes our lives life-giving. That the Church may continue to grow by welcoming and redeeming human cultures and values. Let us pray to the Lord. God, God of, of life, life makes our, our lives life-giving. Life that those involved in economic development programs may support farmers and may those who develop the land protect and respect the natural environment. Let us pray to the Lord. God, God of, of life, life makes our, our lives life-giving. Life life that our families, especially our children, may grow in the ways of grace and mature into Christ-like people. Let us pray to the Lord. God, God of, of life, life makes our, our lives life-giving. Life that the sick may be steadfast in their faith and may be strengthened through our care and concern. Let us pray to the Lord. God, God of, of life, life make our, our lives life-giving. Life that our beloved dead may enjoy the peace of God's kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. God, God of life, life make, make our, our lives life-giving. Life In silence, let us pray for our own particular needs as well as for the intentions offered in this Mass.
Heavenly Father, help us to grasp the importance of the time in which we are living. Open our hearts to your word so that we may always bear fruit. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us our spiritual food. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Please all stand. Pray, my dear sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. Look, we pray, O Lord, that the offerings we make to your majesty that whatever is done by us in your service may be directed above all to your glory. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in goodness you created man, and when he was justly condemned, in mercy you redeemed him through Christ our Lord. Through him the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore, and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exultation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please kneel. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the jewel, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. 
Do this in memory of me. Please stand. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church is spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us love like Jesus. Let us pray like Jesus. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our many sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us, Lamb of God. You take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Please kneel. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. But only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Please stand. Let us pray. May your sacraments, O Lord, we pray, perfect in us what lies within them, that what we now celebrate in signs we may one day possess in truth, through Christ our Lord. Amen. My dear sisters and brothers, on November 1 and November 2, the uh, uh, solemnity of all saints and the commemoration of the faithful departed. There will be two masses on those days, one at 7.30 and the other is 12.10. So both on November 1 and November 2, there are two masses. And if you wish, there are envelopes on which you can write the names of your departed brothers and sisters or loved ones, and you may get the envelopes at the cathedral office to your left. No? And, uh, and then the second chapel to your right, the Blessed Souls Chapel, no, will be the place to, uh, in which you can pray for your departed uh, loved ones. There will be also candles available. Kung gusto nyo magtirik ng kandila para sa inyo mga mahal na yumauna. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Eucharist has been offered. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. Oh, uh -huh.